Hi guys, it's your girl Ginger Snap and I'm back with more 90 Day Fiance hot mess. So <laughs> this, um, we're going to be covering 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days. So this is um, season three, episode one, which aired last night. And so I think this is going to be good. I'm still questioning, um, you know, some of the storylines, but you know, in all of these weird storylines, we can weed out the real ones from the fake ones. And just as much as the fake ones are just so annoying and, um, you know, crock of bullshit, you know, the real ones I still can rock with and I can still appreciate them. And I like to follow their, um, their stories. So, all right, let's get into it. Also, please do not forget to like and subscribe, guys. Please don't forget. And I appreciate you, God, you all of you, and I love you. So anyways, um, okay, so we first have Rebecca. Um, I think Rebecca's from Georgia, and she is 47 years old. She is a private investigator, which surprised me because... I thought that PIs can detect bullshit, but anyways, all right, let, let's, let's keep going with her. So she has three whole adult kids and she's a grandmother. Um, she's been married three times. All right. And she said the first two marriages were your regular run of the mill, traditional American marriages. Then the third one was, um, a guy who she married from Morocco. Surprise, surprise. And after three months of being married, he cheated on her. She put her on her private eye and she put a GPS tracker on his car. And lo and behold, he was cheating on her. So that's, you know, one of the dilemmas she's facing because, um, now she has trust issues. So she's in the process of getting that, you know, marriage, um, over with divorced, going through a divorce, whatever. And so on Facebook, she had met, um, this good looking young 26 year old snack. Um, his name is Zied, I think Zaid or Zied or something like that. So she met him on Facebook and, um, yeah, they hit it off. He doesn't mind her age and their relationship is uh, very weird. She's self-conscious. So she uses a lot of filters. This, listen, this lady is the filter queen and the filters do make her look a hundred times better. She's not an ugly woman. She's really not. She's really pretty. She's an older, mature, pretty woman, but the filters do give her life. And now she's self-conscious because she thinks Zied, when they come face to face, is going to be like, um, no catfish. <laughs> But, um, they do FaceTime. I thought, okay, they must FaceTime. But when they FaceTime, she goes through this whole, um, makeup tutorial session. She makes herself up. She gets her ring light out and it's this whole prep, you know, before she appears in front of him. So yeah, that's a little misleading. And I think that isn't that making the relationship start out kind of vain. It's all about looks. But they have a weird relationship. They, they're always sending each other these Insta snap stories and emoji. She thinks he's so romantic because he sends her all these emojis. So in the video you see in the, in the episode, you see her, you know, in her private eye, you know, pri um, private investigator mode, you know, she's doing her thing. And then in her private life, she melts like butter when she talks about this 26 year old that she's in love with all the way from Tunisia. Also guys, remember Morocco is where Azad is from and Tunisia is where Mohammed is from. Did those ring a bell? Yes. Ding, ding, ding. That's Nicole's ex Azan from Morocco and Danielle's <laughs> ex from Tunisia. So some with these countries, they're hotbeds. I don't know if they're hotbed countries for fraud or for, you know, defrauding white women, you know, into these online relationships. I don't know. It's just strange. But anyway, so, um, yeah, so they, she, she's so mesmerized by his eyes and the Snapchat, she's like, Oh, I love you. You are my darling. You are my life. You are everything to me. Oh, and then she starts crying and I'm like, Oh, <laughs> 
she is just so enamored with with him but everyone around her is worried though because she's had a bad experience with someone from the middle east already um but she told her kids her kids are upset with her too they they do not support this whatsoever um because she is on her way um she says in a couple of days to go see him and she tells her kids there's, no, there's nothing to worry about and there's no red flags but you know of course everyone around her is worried and you know they have a right to be because when she's hurt who are they going to go cry to she well not her them her she's going to go crying to her family members so they have a right to be you know um scared and um anxious for what she's getting herself into and also of course there's always a storyline a plot with these the, uh, the first one is she's afraid of you know how he's going to react to her real looks which i don't think is that bad um it's not like you know angela <laughs> Angela could, took some great selfies, but in, in person, I think Michael was, um, was a little surprised. So yeah. So, and the other secret she's keeping is that she's not, um, fully divorced from her ex-husband. So she's afraid to tell Zaid about that. So that's the dilemma she's facing. We're going to see how that carries on throughout this season, what his reaction is going to be to her looks. And, oh yeah, so another thing is in Tunisia, and I believe Muhammad said this too, or Azan, or one of the those um, questionable characters. But I guess it's something that is true, and I could understand why. So unwed couples are not allowed to stay in the same hotel room in uh, Tunisia, okay? And so Ziad's father passed down a, an edict or a law saying that they cannot stay in the same hotel room. But um, Rebecca asked Ziad during one of their FaceTime sessions, are you gonna stay with me during the, you know, my visit there in the same hotel room? He says, yes. So then she's like, oh my God, I don't want to go there. And his family thinks different of me. Uh, yes, they will think different of you. You know the law over there, okay? But you're going there and you're just ignoring them and basically letting him stay with you, okay? So you can't be concerned by your image to his family. You possibly, you, you just can't be. And that's one thing I noticed with Americans. It's like they go, us Americans, myself included, okay? I'm not targeting anyone. It's all of us. It's this whole mentality a lot of us have that we can go to another country and just, you know, um, disregard their rules, disregard their their um, their morals. You you can't do that. Every, that people are, I'm serious. People I think are playing with other people's customs and cultural norms. We just are so unaware. So that I don't agree with, with um, her doing. You have to go there and respect the culture. You wanna get married to these people and integrate into their culture. You have to respect their customs or don't be surprised by the, um, by the consequences of your actions. So. Rebecca, you just need to be careful, girl. And just next time, just marry an American. All right. Okay, guys. Next, we have Caesar. Oh, God. Okay. So Caesar is um, African. Well, I don't know if he's African American, but he's black. 46 year old nail tech. So off the bat, that was um, an interesting description of him. Okay. So furthermore, his um, love interest is in Ukraine. Um, she's a Ukrainian that he met on some dating site or dating app named Anastasia Date. Oh boy, and it's a paid um, website or a, a paid dating services. And what was her name? I think Maria and she is, I believe, 28. So, and he explained how the website goes. So he scrolls through, picks a girl that he's attracted to, and then he fills out some application, or whatever, to send her flowers. And she sends back a picture with her holding um, the application he filled out or the shipping, um, the shipping note or something. And you know, the picture and, and all that cost, basically he paid $450. You guys, what the fuck? Really? 
What the, that was just ridiculous. There, this is scam central guys. I'm telling you, there is an international scamming, you know, scamming movement on Americans. I, I, I can't imagine. I don't know. I don't want to know what other people overseas think of us. You know, they just like Danielle, not Danielle, Chantel's mom said they think we're stupid Americans. They do $450 to send flowers. Oh boy. All right. So, so then, so now the producers are interviewing Caesar, you know, asking her about Maria and she sends all of these, um, you know, these snap, Snapchat messages, all these Instagram, uh, short clips that they sent to each other. And she's like, Oh, my husband, oh, I love you. Oh, my husband, my darling. Oh my darling, I can't wait. I can't wait. She sends him these things. So the producers, you know what? I think the producers are watching this. You know, they're interviewing different people. And I think the producers now can identify um, a scammer. So they asked Caesar an interesting question. They said, does she ever say your name? Now, I don't know if it's editing, but he pauses. And then he says, he says she calls him Big Daddy. So it's like she, she probably makes these videos and sends out mass videos to different lovers, different admirers, which that's sad because he paused and he thought about it. And so, you know, that's another hmm moment right there. So Caesar says they've been in a relationship for five years. Oh my God. So he's only a nail tech. All right. So I don't know. Do they make money? You guys leave me comments below. I want to know a lot of you guys are, you know, are in different kinds of jobs, nail techs, tip industry. He might make a lot of tips, but I can't imagine that he makes a ton of money. Well, and he says it. he admittedly says that he doesn't have a lot of money. He's short on money because he sends this chick $800 a month. Are you kidding me? And over the past five years, guys, this has, he's, he has to be lying. He has sent over to Ukraine, to this woman, $40,000. This has to be a joke. If this is not a joke, he is out of his mind. Somebody needs to get this dude some mental health. Because even with Rebecca, these people normally in their normal day-to-day -day lives, they seem like they're sane people who can focus in their regular lives, but they get so captivated and enamored by this online fantasy. It's $40,000. That's ridiculous. So they, and they've never met. So he's frustrated because they have never met. And every time they try to meet Miss Maria backs out, you know, she backs out. She comes up with an excuse. So now this scenario, he finally says, you know what? I'm going to Ukraine. I'm going to Ukraine. I'm coming over there. He tells Maria, I'm coming. That's it. I'm coming. So she's like, um, no, you can't come because it's cold. <laughs> I would have said, well, I'll bundle up. I, I don't know. I mean, how do you, how do they live? I know, you know, Russia, Ukraine, you guys, my Slavic people, is it really that cold? I need some Slavic people in the comments. Let me know. Is it really that? I, I know it's cold. I know Siberia, Russia. Yes, it gets very cold, but it ain't. I mean, Ukrainian weather, is it the same as that, you know, minus 20 Siberian weather? I don't think so. It's probably like the Northeast. This dude, I think he comes from North Carolina. It gets pretty cold here too in the winter. So I would have told her, no, nah, I'm still coming. I'm a bundle up with my North face and I'm coming. Then she says, I want to, let's go to Mexico so we can um, enjoy each other instead. Um, Mexico. He's like, no, I'm coming to Ukraine. She's like, Mexico. He, listen, he's too nice. She kept saying Mexico. I'd have been like, you in Ukraine. What you know about Mexico, ho? What you know? She kept saying, like, what do you know? She must have been there before, guys. I'm telling you, she must have other sugar daddies all over the world on all continents so she must know something because if you're in a country you've never traveled he says she's a receptionist she doesn't make much money what you know about mexico oh but anyways um so he says he can't afford to go to mexico that you know that put a, a kibosh on his ukrainian plans um but he says okay he can't afford it but i guess he's gonna coupon clip 
<laughs> we did see him coupon clipping. He's he's going to try to afford it. He's going to work harder. And I think he's going to ask his boss for an advance, which he did. Um, his boss, that's it's his good friend. And that's his boss. And he was straight up with him. He says, I think you're being catfished. Um, and you know, Caesar just is like, no, no, I love her. I love her. And I, you know that I think the boss feels bad for him. They know he's a nice guy. So, but anyways, his boss, um, advances him to $2,000, which he in turn sends to, uh, Ukraine. Okay, fine. It gets there within a few hours, which that was fast. I was, I was thinking that it would get there, you know, 24 hours, but the lady was like, no, four, few, few hours, four hours. I was like, oh, okay. All right. Maybe I should start a, a, a transfer business. Um, but anyways, so, so then he texts her, I guess, con confirming that she got the money. Then listen to this guys. She can't go to Mexico for political reasons. Shocker guys. Another cancellation. This is just, this is so, oh my God. He's wasting money precious money and time. He says she's done this before. You know, she's lost. He sent her money for plane tickets and she got the money stolen or they took half of it. She's taking the money and keeping it because Caesar, when this happens, why don't you tell her to return the money, return it? You know, then he says, Oh, he trusts her. And oh, this is just horrible. So she says, yeah, there, there's political issues. Again, my Slavic people, my Ukrainian people, my Czech. Was there something going on maybe last year that we didn't know about? End of 2018. I don't know when this filmed, but within the past two, year, guys, two years, guys, was there a travel ban or such political turmoil that people could not travel out of Ukraine? She said there was something about martial law going on. You know, I, I mean, I watch some CNN and Google, but I don't remember there being such a, you know, um, issue. You know what? I don't believe it. You know why? One of my friends sent both of her kids last summer to Slovakia. It's not Ukraine, but aren't there layovers, right? Wouldn't they lay over maybe in, um, Czech or Ukraine or something. Cause if that region was hot at the time, I don't think my friend would have sent her kids, but she did send them and she went herself. So, and that was last summer, I believe. So I don't believe that, but you guys let, Hey, let me know. So then he's like, you know, he starts getting snippy with her and arguing with her. He's like questioning her. Like you're, you'll be fine. He's like, so you mean to tell me that nothing can go out or come in or anything? She's like, no, no, I can't No. He's like, okay, well I'll make sure you're safe. She's like, oh, it's easier said than done. She she starts showing her ass. I would be like, oh, <laughs> okay. Give my money back. But, um, so she's like, nope, you know, I can't, I, you know, just. So they hang up and then, oh my God, you know, guys, I am, um, I'm critical of these characters, but this part broke my heart. He starts crying <sighs> again. I don't know if this is an Oscar worthy performance or if this is real. And he, he says he's frustrated. This, it did break my heart. I felt bad, but come on, Caesar. This is obviously a scam. This is obviously a scam. It's so obvious. And I know you're enthralled. She's, she's very gorgeous. Listen, my, my, um, what do you call it? Eastern European peoples. You guys are some good looking people. Very good. Polish, Russian, slow. They are gorgeous. So I, is he mesmerized by her beauty? You know, it's just, it's really sad. So well, we're going to continue following Caesar and I hope he finally ends it and steps into the light Caroline and just realizes that she's just not that into you, buddy. All right. Where do I begin guys? Okay. What the fuck? All right. Okay. We have 19 year old reformed all American wild child, rowdy girl named Avery. All right, guys. Um, let me just get through this because again, you, some of these people, this generation, people are playing with fire. They don't understand. All right, let's get to it. Okay. Like I said, she was a wild child. I don't know what she did. Does this girl rob a bank? <laughs> 
was this girl prostituting? Because everyone in her life is like, you were, you were this, you did some bad things. You were horrible. I want to know what did she do besides just, you know, acting up. I thought she was the way she describes it. I thought she was just acting up, but everyone makes it seem like she was just out there strung out on drugs you know, robbing, killing, and stealing. That's what they make it seem like. But anyway, so, all right, this girl, I think she needed, um, she needed, in her words, some guidance. She needed some direction in her life. What does she do? Now, I tell people, if you feel like, you know, you, you're trying to find yourself, you better go skydiving. You better get thee to a nunnery. <laughs> You better go backpacking through Asia and Europe, right? Just go do, just go see the world. No, this girl converts to Islam. <laughs> this girl was a two time homecoming queen, clubbing, booty shaking, popping, twerking, whatever she was doing. And then she converts to Islam. Okay. That's fine. A lot of people convert to Islam. That's fine. They find enlightenment in it, you know? their life's purpose, their life's mission in, you know, religion and discovery. That's fine. But it's her family that makes me side eye this chick. So she converts to Islam and she is, she throws herself into the whole, the whole religion. She's wearing the garb. She is just sporting everything. She only shows her face and her hands. Then she went on a Muslim dating app and she met um, Omar. All right, so get this, guys. Omar is from Syria, okay? If you guys don't know anything about Syria, they are going through some kind of civil war. A lot of, you've seen it in the news. There's a lot of political unrest. People are unnecessarily losing their lives, guys. It's a war-torn country. Even Omar was displaced and lived somewhere else. His whole hometown has been reduced to ruins and, and, and rocks and pebbles. They even showed a picture of it. It was horrible. So her plan is to go meet Omar in Lebanon because she can't go to Syria. And I think Syrian people can't come um, here, I guess. So um, they have to meet in Lebanon and she plans to marry him. Okay. And her family is like, what are you doing? What, like, what are you thinking? Her mom is besides herself. Her mom's like, this girl does not know what she wants to do with herself. Her brother put her on blast. And it's always the little brothers. Remember Nicole's brother, Tom, is his name Thomas? Put Nicole on blast. Well, Avery's brother did the same thing. He's like, listen, Avery don't know what she, and he's like, he gotta be like 12. He's like, this chick don't know what she wants. One minute she's a vegetarian and she's sneaking meat up to her room. <laughs> so basically he's telling us, don't take this chick seriously. And I don't. Okay. So she has to go to Omar, um, to go meet him and Omar. And her mother's going along with her, which at least I'm happy that her mom's doing that. Um, but she has another secret. She didn't tell her mom is that her, I think her mom is thinking that she's going to marry Omar there and come back to America, fill out the proper forms and then send for Omar. But no, Avery always went to throw a wrench, um, a monkey wrench in, in life's plans. Um, she is going to stay there. Okay. Listen, these kids people really want to give their parents a heart attack. And I'm not saying I, I, I'm innocent because I've been known to, to give my mom a heart attack too, but my, her, my, my heart attacks were minor compared to going to a war torn country and marrying a guy that I've been chatting with, I think only a month. And then they got engaged. What the hell? So her mom doesn't know that. And you know what? I can't, her mom better beat her ass and drag her ass back home at the airport. I swear she better. And I've known some people, there was, I know of one girl, something about she went to Haiti without her parents knowing, don't you know that Haitian mother met her at the <laughs> airport in Haiti and threatened her. <laughs> Some parents don't play. So, um, yeah, her mom is going to go with her, but she did not let her mom know about her pending plan. So we'll see how that, you know, um, 
you know, plays out. And I think she's also worried about, you know, her husband. I think people are telling her, well, what if he's not what he, you know, what he seems, you know, because apparently he's very, very traditional. You know, he's never kissed. He's never, you know, done anything. And they're, her friends are looking at her like, uh, <laughs> y'all don't match. You guys don't match at all. What are you going to tell them? Because she's way more experienced. So this is what I mean by Americans playing with people's customs. Avery, don't go there. She, okay, now she's very stoic and she's very involved and very, you know, demure and um, trying to abide by all the Muslim rules. But she's only 19, guys. Her frontal lo lobe is not formed all the way yet. What if she gets bored? She seems like the type of person who gets bored. Don't go there and try to now defy your Muslim husband. That's a no-go, okay? This is what I mean. Don't play with people's religions. To you, this may be a fad or a passing, you know, obsession. This is people's lives, okay? As we know, people will, will uh, let's just put it this way. They're not standing for the disrespect of Islam, all right? You better watch out, Avery. All right, guys. Now we have 44 year old Darcy. Darcy's back guys. And she's now getting over her whirlwind romance with Jesse. Do you guys remember Jesse from Amsterdam? Jesse with the hair. <laughs> so Jesse, um, they're broken up because she ruined everything per Jesse. And she told him to get out of my life. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what he did. He got out of her life. So now she met a new guy again on the internet, but no, she met him four years. Okay. Her, her story is weird. She met him four years ago, but she was with Jesse. So the guy respected her space and allowed her to be with Jesse. But then when they broke up, um, the guy was there for her to lean her, her internet E head on, I don't know, on, on his E shoulder. This is, Dar Darcy, that's another one. Fake, fake, fake. It's, it just doesn't make sense. Um, she didn't learn her, learn her lesson, so she's dating another younger guy, but I think instead of, what was, how old was Jesse? 29, this dude's 39. Um, his name is Tom, and he's British, and he's serving me James Bond, Pierce Brosnan tea. Um, and he's a fashionista or he works in fashion or something. Um, so Darcy is going to go meet him again in, well, no, she's never met him. She's going to go meet him in the UK and Darcy feels bad because she put herself, herself and her children through Jesse gate. And this is Darcy's storyline now finding love again this time in the UK with a more mature, you know, um, fantastic debonair, more mature man. Oh God. Oh yeah. And her twin sister, Stacy is now in the mix and she's marrying a, or engaged to a young 20 some Albanian, Albanian guy named, I don't know, Algernon. I, uh, I'm so not interested in this I just all right next okay so finally we have 38 year old uh, Timothy so Timothy or Tim is a successful businessman um, he has a gun design business where he basically adorns guns with um, interesting designs and they're not meant to be shot they're just like collectors items and so he describes himself as an ugly duckling. When he was growing up, um, he was like nerdy. He was the last guy girls would ever think about dating. He stayed locked up in his room playing Dungeons and Dragons. He was one of those types. And so now he says that's why as he gets older, he tries to look his best. He tries to fit in. So even on the exterior, he looks polished and he drives. I don't know, a Porsche. I don't, he drives some kind of luxury car. Inside, I think, and he tries to fit in, but on the inside, he still feels like that dorky kid. And so um, his 
lover is from Colombia, okay? So he fell in love with a quote unquote hot chick from Colombia and guess from what town? From Bucaramanga. And who else, guys, if you remember, is from Bucaramanga? None other than Pau. Yes, our friend Pau. So I don't know if Bucaramanga just um, pumps out the same kinds of women, but this girl is also feisty and extremely good looking. And, you know, she's out there, Instagram, showing her butt and... Lo and behold, Timothy runs across her page and falls in love. Oh yeah, she also has a one and a half year old too. So that's that. So he plans on going to visit. Is he going to visit? I think so, yes. He's going to make his way there. But oh, there's always a dilemma. Never fails, there's always a dilemma. So Tim has a (laughs) strong-faced (laughs) ex-girlfriend. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Her, she has, she's strong looking. <laughs> but anyways, um, his ex-girlfriend is still in his life and his ex-girlfriend is his best friend. Okay. And also, and I think he can't completely, um, step away from his ex-girlfriend because his ex-girlfriend also has a daughter whom he considers like his own daughter. So it makes it tough for them to completely let go. So, you know, she's there, okay? So now there's already some um, friction between um, Tim's new girlfriend and his ex-girlfriend, even though they haven't met, but the ex-girlfriend does not co-sign his relationship because she thinks that, um, what is his new girlfriend's name? Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I don't know. But anyways, his new girlfriend, I think the ex-girlfriend thinks she's a gold digger. But guys, do you get the sense that, do you guys get the sense that um, the only reason why the ex-girlfriend stuck around is because he has money and he takes care of her daughter? Where are these guys, baby's daddies, the real fathers? You know what I mean? So the same can be said for her. Why are you sticking around this ex, your, your ex-boyfriend? Cause he's taking care of you and your daughter. He's rich or well, he has a lot of money. He's successful. So I, and Tim also states that all of his previous ex-girlfriends have threatened to leave him because of his best friend ex or, or whatever you want to call him. So it seems like this ex-girlfriend is always stepping in the way of his relationships and that's why he can't move on. But he wants to finally just have someone where he can spend his life with and enjoy his successes with. And he's not able to, you know, but listen, I think this pal wannabe pal part two is not having it. I don't, it's going to be an interesting season because the way she's talking to Tim, I think um, the ex-girlfriend wanted to throw him a going away party. Um, before he heads out to Columbia and the new girlfriend was like, absolutely not. Why? Why is your ex-girlfriend throwing you a party? Okay. I want to FaceTime in on this party and I want to see everything. She wants it to be as if she were there because she is not playing. So this is going to be interesting. Um, so it's basically the ex-girlfriends versus the current girlfriends allegations of gold digging and all this jazz. So we'll see how this goes. That, that's their plot. That's their storyline. We'll see. So, all right. So that's it for 90 day fiance before the 90 days, uh, season three, episode one. Um, what do you guys think? Do you think this is going to be a good season or is it just going to be a, a snooze fest? Let me know, uh, leave all your comments below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next week. Bye.